Some steps to modernize mental health codes here in the first state have already occurred. A good example is the Rick Van Story Resource Center in Wilmington. That's where Governor Jack Markell drew attention to last year after signing legislation to offer more treatment options. That's everything that we are. I mean, the, we are the resource center for everybody that has mental illness. Reforming Delaware's mental health system remains a top priority, especially for a wide variety of stakeholders reviewing Delaware mental health law and procedures. Rather than applying most of our resources in a hospital-based setting, we're looking at how do we better fund our community so that our community can better support individuals with mental illness. While that works for the clients here at the Rig Van Story Center, where close to 100 people with some type of mental condition frequent daily, that may not work for the burgers. Dave's sister, who he wishes not to identify, needs a little more. The main challenge is to, to get her a level of care that she actually really needs. And um, right now she's in a group home, and we, we feel strongly that she needs to be in a nursing care facility. One of our concerns right now with the group home is the lack of activity empty hours of really not doing anything. That was our main concern with her is that she not sit up and watch TV all day. Mary supports social recreation similar to what's offered at the RVRC, where the goal is to keep members engaged in a number of resources. It also helps that the staff can relate to many of their clients. I have bipolar mental illness, substance abuse problems, and this affords me an opportunity to work with my peers in helping them. I have a master's in education, so I'm able to teach the GED class. Such classes are definitely needed to train those who suffer from mental health conditions, making sure they receive the tools required to get a job. Individuals with mental illness probably have the highest rate of unemployment. You know, it is our belief a lot of that has to do with the stigma associated with a serious persistent mental illness. That's part of the reason why Eric says his job here comes natural. I'm not here to do things for people. I'm here to empower them, to help themselves in recovery, to recover from mental illness, uh, substance abuse problems. But outside of the resource center, stakeholders are also paying close attention to some commitment laws, trying not to overly confine people with mental illness. I believe the original intent of the outpatient commitment law was to enable people to actually have their services within the community but still have the oversight of the court. That may be archaic at this, at, at this point. If they're in the community, does the court really need to mandate that level of oversight now that we have this or we're, we're growing our robust system of care? Current code only focused on the commitment side when people require the highest level of support. The goal is to go in a different direction now. However, psychiatrist Patricia Lifrak adds that the highest level of support may be the only option for older teens about to become young adults who typically get lost in the system. They age out when they turn 18. So I could be seeing a patient um, and, and the day they turn 18, I can't see them anymore for child mental health. So then it's like, what do you do with them? Meanwhile, for CEO Alan Conover, it's personal. His answer is to continue to expand services at the Van Story Center that continues to grow since his debut four years ago. This is the best I've ever done in my entire life. I've been in our institution since I was six years old. I mean, now, you know, this is my passion. I'm here. 12, 14 hours a day. This is my life, you know, helping other people and helping myself by doing it.